gon' call me Jiggy when I'm home, they call me Snowman yeah. We ain't never home, but treat the city like the base, yeah You know where to look if you're looking for the wave, yeah Looking for the... What's happening? What it do? What's going down? Welcome to another episode of the Eurostepper Podcast. Excited about this one today. High level player that's on the show. But I know I got to ask this question every time we start. What is it looking like weather-wise over there in Seattle, Snow? You know what? Clear blue skies. It's not bad today. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> a change in life. <laughs> <laughs> You should be happy about that. I anyway, man, good. let's get into it. We don't want to, you know, take a lot of time from the MVP here. You know what I mean? He's a feeble European young player of the year. He's a three-time Czech Republic player of the year, a three-time Serbian cup winner, a three-time Serbian league champion, three-time Adriatic league champion. He's a two-time Turkish league all-star, a two-time Turkish President Cup winner, a three-time Turkish League champion, a two-time EuroLeague Magic Moment guy, a three-time Euro, All-EuroLeague First Team, a EuroLeague champion, and a EuroLeague MVP. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Jan Vesley. Thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, happy to be here, and let's get to it. Hey, Young, yeah. one thing I wanted to jump in, but before we get into your the story and all that, one thing I wanted to ask you is, hearing that whole introduction, I know sometimes as a player, you just kind of just are doing your thing, you're just playing, and you, you kind of know some of the things you did, but you're not really paying attention to it. I saw your face as he was, as he was telling all, saying all the things that you've done. What does that feel like, hearing it all? Uh... To be honest, uh, when you started with uh, with the, you know Serbian uh, leagues and then Serbian like Abba leagues uh, championships, you know it's uh, it's a long time ago. But uh, when you were talking about even more, you know all the accomplishments I, I did, you know it's uh, it's make me realize how old I am first of all, and then uh, <laughs> you know it's it's a hell of a career, you know to to be honest, and to be like. Before before we joined in, like 15, 20 minutes ago, we were just uh, in the office unpacking because we just moved uh, one month, two months ago to the new house, and we were unpacking all the all the trophies and, and uh, with my wife trying to rearrange uh, uh, the 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 bookshelf, and uh, I, we were taking it out and like you said, you know, my face was like this, and even when we were opening it, it was the same face. You know, I was like, wow, okay, this is. I was, you know, the third, uh, first team of the year, you know, was, I was like, wow, was three of them, basically. You know, so, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy with that, happy about it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a hell of a career, to be honest. It is, man. But you said you was old. You're only 30. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> or, okay, then, no, I'm not old, but I play, for, I play for a long time then. Yeah. <laughs> I started young, yes. You started really young, man. I remember... Um, I was in Slovenia during a time when you were really young and they were talking about you as a prospect. I remember your name coming up and you were in a small, small club that's kind of known or had been known for bringing up uh, or developing players back in Slovan. Yes, sir. How distant is that memory? Um, it is far by the years, but you know, in my, in my head, it's still, uh, it's still very close, you know. This is uh, the first time. I mean, I was 16 when I left uh, uh, when I left Czech Republic, and uh, it's it's to be honest, uh, it's it's a very young age, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm proud of my parents. Then you know that uh, they decided to leave me there, and you know, uh, going uh, with this path. So I mean, I, I I was I was there alone, you know. It was uh, mm -hmm. my parents, you know. They both were working, and uh, they couldn't be there with me. I mean, I was lucky that uh, the coach of of Slovan, you know, uh, Miro Alilovic, you know, in that in that time, you know, he he helped me a lot. You know, we still you know talk uh, on on daily basis. You know, we basically uh, we are best friends. So. That memory from Slovan is, is, is very, you know, um, alive. That's amazing. 
Well, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Jan, I want to let you know, the first time I ever heard the name Jan Vesely, I, we actually interviewed one of your own teammates also, James Gist. When you got okay. to <laughs> James. Up, right? And I told James, I'm going to tell you the same thing. You guys probably had one of the most athletic teams at the time. I agree. <laughs> man, how fun was that, man? That had to be an amazing time because Every time I looked up, it was either you having a dunk or James having a dunk or your big five man, Jody White dunking. It was somebody always dunking. It just looked like a fun time. I mean, uh, yes, uh, the, the, that, was, uh, that was my last year. And uh, uh, we, had, we had, you know, great time, you know, playing. You know, we enjoyed, you know, playing defense. We tried to, you know, play great defense. And... And try to get the open fast break, you know. And uh, you saw you saw some highlights for sure uh, from those uh, moments, you know, just running to fast break and just dunking, you know. Even if you go to uh, two on zero, we just you know don't know who's gonna take the dunk, <laughs> uh, you know. So it was uh, it was it was good times, you know. I I really enjoyed it, and you know it was it was great to play with him and you know all, all the team, you know, it was it was great, you know. And we were dominating, so. Basically, you know, we, we we had amazing amazing time. From the European side, we, we interview a lot of Americans. How do you guys, let's say you, for example, how did you get started playing professionally? Because I know that you started at a very young age, as we already said, like you have a lot of accolades. Well, what how old were you when you played your first? Your first professional year of basketball, how old were you? Uh, I was 16 when I was uh, first professional, maybe 17 to be honest. Yes, uh, 17. Uh, because when I came to when I came to Slovan, uh, I, I signed a contract, but uh, there was a, there was a problem that I was not 18 yet, and uh, I was basically not allowed to uh, leave the country. So mm -hmm. if I'm under 18, I cannot. Uh, go there so I didn't have the permission to, to, to play my first year. So basically I was just uh, practicing uh, with, the, with the young team and uh, playing just for uh, school, you know, where I was taking just classes of English and Slovenian mm -hmm. because I didn't speak any English when I went to Slovenia. That's, uh, that's also another fun, fun fact that I didn't speak any English, any Slovenian. And uh, basically for first month I was, I was quiet. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> But, you know, after that, it got fixed uh, by some time uh, that I was able to play. So, 17, I was when I started playing, you know, in the first professional game and, uh, in, the, in the senior team. That's a, I'm glad you brought up that point um, about the different languages you speak. Um, I think Dave and I were having this conversation. But uh, I wanted to ask you. You now, you just mentioned now that you speak at least three languages. Are there any other languages you speak? One, that's part. That's the first half of the question. The second half of the question is, um, what do you think is the general perspective of players who have American teammates come over and they only speak English? Um, okay, let's go from the first half. Uh, I mean, I speak three languages. I speak uh, Czech, that's my, that's my native language. I speak Serbian because I played three years there. My wife is Serbian, so and we speak at home Serbian. And I speak English, you know, because basically because of basketball and uh, I left when I was young. And I, heard, I learned English uh, through, through basketball. Uh, so that's that's the three languages and uh, what's the perspective of uh, coming American players, you know, to, to Europe and playing with us? Uh, I mean, it's, it's okay, you know, nobody like, uh, I don't think nobody thinks about it uh, in any way, in a good or bad way. Uh, I mean, uh, English is, uh, it's, uh, you know, the first language in the world, basically, and uh, uh, that's the language that everybody speaks, you know, coaches speaks, even if it's Serbian coach, if it's a Greek mm -hmm. coach, if it's Spanish coach, you know, uh, most of them, you know, speak, uh, speak English and uh, the, the language is in, in the team, it's, uh, uh, it's English, you know, so uh, 
I don't see I don't see some uh, difficulties, you know, uh, with uh, with the language. Right. So, yeah. you go ahead, Dave. The difficulties you've been in. I know that, you know, coming coming over, starting at a young age, leaving home, because I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if my mother would have let me leave and go to another no. country at the age of 17. Not a chance. So, ever since then, you left home, right? And you've been to, what, two or three different countries that you played in. Actually four, because you also played in the NBA. Yeah. What was one of your major culture shocks when you went to these countries? What blew your mind that you seen that country do where it was like, man, I can't believe this, they do this, or I can't believe I see this? Because, for example, one of mine, when I seen that hole in the ground when I came to Turkey for the toilet, that was a major shock. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, to, okay. Uh, I think maybe you'll be surprised, but for me, uh, the biggest shock of my career, you know, to where I played was uh, to come into the United States, to be honest. Okay. Uh, because, okay, I was, uh, I was very young to go to Slovenia, so I spent there two years and uh, I got the feeling of the culture. For 16 year old, you don't uh, even know anything, basically. So you don't know what is the culture of Czech Republic and, and stuff like that, you know. So you just uh, go with it. I went to, after that, after two years, I went to Serbia, basically, which is now my second home. I speak the language. I, I spent the summers there. Uh, and my, uh, let's say, in-laws <laughs> lives there. Uh, so I took the culture as my own also. So there was not a surprise for me. Then I went to, when I was 21, I went to States. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything it's uh, uh, by the rules. Everything is like, uh, for example, I will just say the, the, the stupidest example. Uh, you talk with somebody, hey, you know, what? do you want to go for coffee? And the, the, that somebody tells you, hey, okay, let's go next Thursday. It's like. But I was about to go now, and like you don't want to go right now with me. And I was like, okay, so I mean, everything had to be planned in, in up front, like you know, in Serbia or in Balkans, you know, we just hey, you want coffee? Okay, let's go now. You know, just yeah. you just sit for 10, 15 minutes, one hour doesn't matter, and you go. So uh, uh, for me it was uh, for me it was <laughs> like you know this. Uh, I mean, I went I went very young also, and uh, that was. Uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing for me, to to be honest, to go to United States, you know, and uh, and see uh, everything by the rules and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's for me Europe and uh, this stuff. It's it's very easy to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Let's jump into some of your uh, some of your actual actual playing career. Um, before we talk about all the places you played, um, one of the things we like to ask on the pod is. Who's maybe the best player you played against in Europe? The best player I played against. A player that gave you maybe that for that one game gave you, you know, trouble while you was guarding him. He just maybe kept scoring on you. You couldn't stop him. You couldn't figure it out. Uh, to be honest, I mean, every season it's, you know, I've been seven years now in Fenerbahce and, uh, and uh, every year, you know, everybody is different. Uh, everybody is in different uh, shape and and and, uh, and stuff. Um, I mean, uh, I'm not I'm not the greatest uh, defender on the low post. I yeah, mean, yeah. so basically in Europe, you know, it's easy. You go trap from baseline. You go trap from the top, and then you rotate or something. If that player is uh, too dominant. Um, but I, I like to I, la I love to play defense against uh, against the guards, you know, and to, to play switch defense and you know uh, and try to challenge them. Uh, to be honest, on that that's why you know I would say uh, on this I would say Mike James. Hmm. Um, I mean he he has a let's say a big bag of tricks, you know, what to do and uh, how to how to beat the player. Right. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's it's not easy. It's very challenging. 
And, uh, you know, even even if he scored, like, you know, uh, some crazy, crazy tough shot, and I know I played a great defense, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, it's I, I run back and say, you know, respect him. Mean, this is a crazy shot. And it goes both ways, you know, and I mean, uh, I stopped him a couple of times, you know, during these years and we played against each other, you know, and uh, he's the same, you know, he now, I don't think he feels that comfortable, you know, to going against me. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's I, I, I like this challenge, you know, it's, I like to, I like to switch on him and like, you know, play and do my best, you know, to stop him. And I know that it's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. you, if then about you, you played for maybe arguably the best coach in Europe ever, legendary coach, uh, Ezeko Obranovic. Um, how was it playing with him? Because I know he's a hard-nosed coach. He don't take no bullshit. You nope. know, I've seen him on the sidelines. Even when I played against him, he, you guys could be winning by 20 points. He's still 100 on the sideline. Yep. How was it playing for him? Uh, it's uh, It's been my best years, you know, uh, mm -hmm. of, my, of my career. I mean, I said, okay, Partizan, that even when I, when I started, but uh, when I look back, you know, uh, I spent uh, six years with him and uh, we have, we also had a different relationship, you know, so uh, he could uh, took, take some bullshit, you know, also from me, you know, so uh, <laughs> when the game, when the game is, uh, you know, on, online and uh, I'm busting my ass off, you know, to to go crazy in defense. I'm uh, really, I'm trying everything, you know, to 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 play good game and you know playing good defense. And then for no reason, you know, he's just yelling at me, you know, last five minutes of the game, and it's like, hey, come on, hey, you did this, Bay. Okay, one mistake I did, and he's yelling at me. And yeah. I'm just, you know, I flipped out, you know, I turned to the bench, I started yelling at him. Uh, so we go back and back and forth with, on each other, and. Uh, but, you know, and we won the game and I go, we, we go back to the locker room. I say, hey, listen, Jacko, you know, it's nothing personal. You know, he said, I know this is, you know, part of the game. So uh, for me personally, you know, it was, uh, uh, was a great relationship and uh, uh, great times, you know, with him uh, on the court. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's, it, was, it was a great experience. But like you said, you know, you can be up 40 and uh, he's still, you know, yeah. uh, if you have the ball and you have 15 seconds left, it's not like, you know, you cross the half court and dream in the ball. He really, he wants to go and play until the end. Yeah. And then, you know, all the opposite team is going crazy, you know, on us. Why, why we are being disrespectful? It's like, oh, my coach is busting our ass to go <laughs> and play until the last, uh, last offense, you know, so. I mean, this time, sometimes you know, these things were a uh, little bit too much, but you know, this is how he, how he is, and you know, we understood that, so we had to play until the end. <laughs> right. Out of all these, um, all the years you've played in Europe, what would you say was your your favorite? Your your not your most successful necessarily. Maybe it is. I don't know. But your favorite season, your favorite group of guys, your favorite team, and why? I mean, yeah, you said uh, cannot be uh, success wise, but it's for sure is uh, success. You know, the the year we won uh, Euroleague, uh, we played we played a great uh, beginning of, of our, our let's say the first half of the season. You know, we felt great. You know, everything was going perfect. Then we had a couple of injuries. Uh, and so we had to, you know, figure things out with the injuries. I think uh, they actually we ended up fifth, you know, and uh, and we went from the we played Panathinaikos on the road the first two games. Mm. So and we knew that was the final four at home in Istanbul. So we have to go there and we have to win, you know. And you're starting away in Panathinaikos, which is yeah. <laughs> the craziest arena basically you, you can play. Uh, so, but by that time, by that uh, the playoff came, you know, everybody were healthy and everybody you know, were feeling great and extremely motivated really because uh, the years before we couldn't make it and uh, and uh, that year we said, okay, well, it's at home, we have to, we have to do it. That's uh, there is no question. Do you mind sharing with the viewers um, what year that was and maybe name a few of the guys that were on that team? It was 2017, 16-17 season. 
Uh-huh. A, ok, who was on the team? Was, uh, Bogdan Bogdanović, uh, Ek Pejudo, you know, Kostas Lukas, uh, Gigi Tatome, Nikola Kalinic, you know, Pero Antic, you know, all, all these guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were on team and uh, like I say, you know, it was not easy. The middle of the season was not easy at all. You know, you, know, you had to play, uh, I had to play most of the time on the four because the foreman was injured or uh, everybody had to rotate, you know, take different, uh, different positions. Uh, but, you know, on the end, uh, you know, we, we got the, we got the championship and uh, it was, it was an amazing, amazing feeling. But, you know, even, even the, the, the group of guys, you know, were, was amazing. Uh, we were together for a long time, even after that, you know, so, uh, with, with the, most of them we play like for, uh, five years. Oh, wow. So that's a long time. Yeah. yeah, in Europe especially, because uh, Europe sometimes can be a revolving door. Uh, yep. You're going to be on a team where you're going to have the same players every year. Yeah, yep. some, I know there's a lot of teams in Europe who switch their teams up every year. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, that's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I would be able to do it, really. This is for me. And I'm basically, you know, that's how we started this year. You know, we changed the coach, we changed a lot of players. And until you get used to all this system, all the new players, you know, to figure out who who does what in offense, in defense. I mean, it's half of the season, and you know how our, our season started. So basically, yeah. it's uh, it's not easy thing, you know. And I think these things need pro, uh, needs time and uh, needs uh, uh, to process. You know, everybody wants to have everything immediately. I mean, that's not possible in in, uh, in anything, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, since you played in Euroleague, you also played the NBA. Can you give us uh, what you what you feel the differences with both are? Like, what's the difference to you between Euroleague and the NBA? Okay, I cannot speak for all NBA. Uh, I can speak for my times uh, that I was in Washington. Wait, 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 wait. Before you start, we know the situation you was in <laughs> in the NBA. You wasn't in the best situation being playing for the Washington Wizards. Yep. But <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like you're asking, I, I think you you are asking the wrong guy uh, this question. So, uh, I mean, I can I can compare I can compare uh, my time in Denver. You know, on this on this level, that was a uh, uh, better system. You know, and was a little bit more team uh, oriented. Uh, <laughs> playing of basketball uh, but like you said you know in Washington it was uh, it was um, the time when I was there it was not 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 the good times <laughs> was that the time Gilbert Arenas was there and the whole locker room gun thing that was the I came the year I came that summer after that I mean that happened in the summer I think and I came after that so basically I came up three four months after that happened so yeah. Imagine, imagine how everybody feels. Not only the players, the the physios, the equipment managers, coaches. You know, I mean, it's it's a, it's a not great situation, I would say. <laughs> and for me, you know, coming from Partizan, where it's you know system, you know, everything is like lined up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this you can you come there and I don't know. It's so I think this this question is for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, what about the, the game itself? Just actually, like stylistically, the way the game is played. No, I cannot say. I cannot say NBA is not the team uh, team basketball. I mean, it is, but it's more uh, individually oriented uh, basketball. You know, in Europe, it's uh, first of all, you know, defensive three second violation. I mean, rule. It's uh, that's the biggest help in Europe that you can play. You know, team defense and you can. Uh, uh, be ready, you know, to help whoever needs help on the court like this in, uh, in the NBA, you know, it's, <laughs> you have to stay all the time thinking, you know, to come out with the both feet, you know, or touch somebody running through the, through the paint. It's not, it's not easy. And I think you spend more time of thinking about this than to, to help somebody in, in a different. So, I mean, I would say, I think for me, that was the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, thing. You know what I keep hearing? I keep hearing from you um, a lot, a lot of conversation about defense. 
And I think that that's really interesting because most guys we bring on the pod or most guys who just play basketball, period, anytime you have a conversation with them about basketball, it's going to be about buckets. It's going to be about them scoring. It's going to be about what's in their bag. It's going to, right? But over and over and over and over and over again, I'm hearing from you the other side of the ball. What is that? What, where did that start for you? What, where'd that come from? Why are you so uh, adamant about playing really strong defense? Why is that so important to you? And where'd that come from? Uh, because I don't have the bag of the buckets, you know. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, no, okay, okay. I mean, uh, I, was, I was talking in, uh, in a lot of interviews that I did with, with the journalists and stuff. Uh, I, I mean, my, my style of basketball, let's talk about offense now. We don't talk about defense. And uh, I am... Uh, Okay, I'm, I'm a five man, you know, you, as a five man, you can still score on the poles and stuff. But again, that's not my strength. Uh, so I'm more and more uh, comfortable in, uh, in the pick and roll. And, uh, you know, let's say handoffs, you know, now uh, in this year, you know, uh, I have uh, the ball a lot in my hands. And still, still, you know, not scoring, not attacking the basket, let's say, you know, one on one and stuff. But I like to, you know, create for uh, uh, for my teammates. And I know if I create for my teammates, then uh, I I will be open in, at some point. So basically, um, that's that's how I think. And then defense. Uh, funny story. I mean, I, I started uh, my my first season in Partizan. I was I was brought to Partizan as a third four man. Okay. And uh, and uh, our three men in uh, around November, I think, or December, I'm not sure. Uh, our three men got hurt, and uh, and coach uh, you had coach told me, yes. And I was playing in the Partizan. I was playing the three men. Mm -hmm, I remember. Yeah, James, yeah, James, and, James had to remind me that you played the three. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So uh, and. I, I would say that started uh, at that point that all my career, all, all my thinking of basketball coming from defense, and then you can uh, then you come to the offense and do whatever you uh, you can to help the team in offense. But uh, we played CSKA in uh, in uh, Belgrade, and I didn't even know I wasn't. I mean, uh, not even practice. I mean, in practice I was play, practicing a little bit of three, but uh, that was not in the plan. Or at least coach didn't tell me. Uh, but coach came to me 45 minutes before the game uh, and he said, like, you're starting at the three and you are guarding uh, Ramon Sishkauskas, which, which is, you know, a legend on the three position, you know. Right. Right. And, uh, and he said, he said, like, I remember this word. He said, like, if you score on you, you're out. <laughs> I said, OK. And I remember I, he scored only three points on me. I, I remember also the stupid help I did. I mean, I helped from a strong side and there was a pass outside on him and he scored an open three and that's only three he scored and uh, basically that's how my career started uh, wow. in Partizan and I was uh, from that moment I was never out of starting lineup uh, until I left uh, Partizan. Wow. So basically that's uh, I would say that goes to, to this moment why I think defense first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say that you know you're not a you know that's not your game scoring with your back to the basket. For but for people who don't know who watch or listen to this pod, your game is dunking on people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say this: <laughs> the disrespect. That is, yeah, <laughs> that, that is your game. That is your game because I've seen a lot of guys that you dumped on over the years. Yeah. I play many years now, so yeah, that is a pretty big number. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't want to be, you know, the guy that was okay. I only dunk on everybody. I right. dunked a uh, I dunk. I got dunked on myself many times. So, so who who dunked on you? Uh. There is, a, there is a lot of guys, you know, uh, in Europe. It's not, uh, I mean, Otelo Hunter, you know, uh, Nikola Milutinov, you know, all these guys, you know, in the past years, you know, you have to, you know, 
if you if I play defense, I try to play defense first. I try to block the shot, and uh, sometimes you're late, and sometimes that happens. I re I came to one game, man. You guys was playing Istanbul Büyükşehir the other day. This was man, yeah. maybe five six years ago, right? And they had a big guy on their team. I think his last name was Stevens, like kind of strong guy. I can't remember. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. The game was at y'all y'all gym. At I think it was our gym. I think you, I know what you're talking about. I don't know who dumped on who first, but it feel like it was back to back plays. Yep. I remember you caught the ball. Somebody missed, and you just caught off the rim on top of him. Boom. Uh, and it seemed like the very next play, I don't know, maybe he was upset and he just came down and turned and you tried to jump and block his shot, he dunked on you. Boom, I was like, man, the sequence of play, that was amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like you you, you try to play defense, but sometimes you, you are late or... Uh... I mean, it's just, it's basketball. Yeah. It's pretty much what it is. If you play enough, I mean, yeah, I mean, you play hard, it's gonna happen. And I know it's not easy to dunk on somebody, you know, uh, athletic or, or a big guy. I mean, I know it's not easy, and I know it's not easy to dunk on me also. So basically, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the respect is uh, mutual, you know, and uh, and I like the challenge, you know. So that's, uh, I, I love this in the game, so. Yeah, man, uh, another question we'd like to ask everybody on here. Out of the countries you played in, what would you say would be your favorite country you say that you can maybe live in that don't have nothing to do with basketball, the country you enjoy the most that you can see yourself living? Hmm. Uh, tough question. Um, that's actually, that's a conversation that we have uh, with my wife uh, many times that uh, where we're gonna live or, or, or not. Yeah. I mean, this is this is my seventh year in in Fenerbahce, and uh, we really enjoy Istanbul and, and Turkey. And uh, with my wife, you know, now working here, uh, that that might be one of the one of the possibilities that we will you know stay here in in, in Turkey. Yeah, uh, we'll see about that. But uh, you know, the things things might change. Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't think that uh, I would be deciding, you know, about, you know, basketball thing. You know, I like to, I would love to live in London. So yeah. not, not for forever, but, you know, at least a couple of years. Right. And to see how it is. I mean, this is big, big uh, question mark for, for me. Right. Fair enough. Um, that actually kind of begs the question, when you say London, why London? Are, are there some other things that you're into? Maybe business-wise, maybe why London? Uh, first of all, my wife uh, studied there for five years. And uh, while going out, uh, I, I spent a lot of time there while she was studying. And uh, I, I really like the city. You know, the weather is horrible, but, uh, <laughs> but I like the city in general. Right. Uh, so I would... I would uh, I would, I would like to and we'll see how, how it is life, uh, how it lives in London. I mean, business wise, uh, why not? I mean, I, I just started recently, you know, to, to, uh, to learn about uh, stocks and stuff, you know, so I'm trying to, you know, uh, learn how, how the stocks are going and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, in what investment wise, you know, I do, I do real estate mostly in, in Czech Republic. So, uh, that's that's what we do. We are opening also here uh, in Istanbul, uh, uh, baby club, basically swimming pool, baby club mm -hmm. uh, for babies, you know, from zero to ten, you know, for kids. So we are working on that. I mean, that's my wife's main 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 project. I mean, I'm just you know helping as much as I can with my with my time. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what. <laughs> where, where the where the pod will take us? Right, got you. Yeah, back back to some basketball. We like to ask every guest on the pod if you could put together your own starting five. Let's as if you were a GM or a coach of all the guys you either played with or against during your time in Europe. Who would that Who would that group be? Hmm. Okay. You can put yourself in that starting five if you want also. 
I mean, I like uh, last uh, last two years. I like my style of basketball, and uh, I might. So I will take me from the last two years I'm, I'm playing right now in this. Uh, what you uh, what you what you what you playing the four or the five? I play. I would play a five. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would play a five. You know, it's good for switching defense. It's good yeah. for pick and roll, quick quick roll. So right, right. Uh, uh, for that uh, uh, on the on the four. On the four, I would uh, I would put Printezis on the four. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I really like his game, you know, back to the basket, you know, this is, uh, you know, your head is spinning, you know, when you're guarding him, you know, you don't know which uh, which hand he will shoot the floater. And <laughs> yeah, his this post, is the his post work is amazing. He has amazing. Yeah, this post. is uh, unbelievable. So this is uh, uh, crazy. No, I, 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 I'm amazing. So, um, on the point guard, on the guard, I would put, uh, to be honest, I would put Campazzo on the point guard. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, he's, uh, you know, this, how, how you play defense, you know, he changed, he changed the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, basically uh, how they, how, how, when he was in Real Madrid, you know, how they guard the pick and roll. Tavares staying in the paint and he's going through the piccolo by himself, you know, with the, with the two people, one guy screening, one guy <laughs> handling the ball. Yeah. So it's uh, it's not easy. But and in offense, you know, he's he's trying to you know to to uh, to find uh, all, all his teammates. You know, this first you know passing and then he's you know trying to score the ball. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that on the two, I would put uh, Bogdan Bogdanovic. Mm -hmm. I mean this. Uh, yeah. Uh, his his skill set and you know his bag is uh, yeah. he's he's very skilled and you know we we played together many years. Um, so when I put myself there, I would like to you know be be, <laughs> be there with me. And on the three, um, on the three, who to put on the three? Uh, I'm not sure if I would put uh, like typical three. Maybe I would put Bogdan on three. And uh, and I would put I think I would put you on 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 the, on the two. So Ooh, basically, yo you. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you would play a little bit of small ball, but uh, <laughs> but Bogdan, you know, he's also big body. So yeah, uh, he's uh, he will be three. So I would put you on two. Yes. You yeah. know what? I really like that group for a number of reasons. I, one, I like I like that you went with the full group of European guys. Yeah, that's the first time, I think. Is it? The first yeah. time? We got to go through it. That's the that is the first time. We've is never, it? yeah. We know most guys going to put, you know, a couple Americans and or most, some guys, we've had guys put a full team of Americans even. Yeah. So I, I think it's pretty cool that you did a whole group of uh, European guys. No, I like I really I like all of, all of those uh, guys. I like their style of of, of playing, mm -hmm. and I can imagine like if I think like you say, coach or a GM, um, I would uh, I would uh, I would like to see you know this uh, this starting five let's say to play, because you know everybody everybody they would have let's say their own uh, position and role. You know, I mean I'm not. A, Lopez player, you have a princess as a Lopez player, so this is, you know, this. I would think this way. Yeah, yeah you got you got Capazzo that's throwing you every every alley oop. Uh, actually, like all, all the three guys will throw the alley oop, so basically, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried too much. But you know, all of them can, you know, uh, they can, you know, uh, finish the game. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, uh, you are shooting uh, the game winner from half court or. <laughs> You know the the fade away, no side away, uh, three point shots, or Bogdan, you know, playing one on one, or Campazzo uh, doing it in, in the pick and roll. So yeah, yeah. Who's the best teammate you played with? Best teammate, basketball wise. Yeah. I, I, did I play with? I would say uh, Bogdan for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, now he's showing this in NBA and. Uh, uh, all the years that he was in uh, in Fenerbahce, and we were together also in Partizan. He was a young guy, you know, not even uh, basically not being in the 12. 
but you know you could see that uh, that uh, he has a potential and he has crazy mind of of succeeding so uh you could see that uh what do you mean, by, the, what do you mean by that crazy mind of succeeding can you break that down i mean uh, for, for for you guys for americans that is uh, like the, the 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 work habit and you know you call it uh, this way you know and uh, the mamba work, work work ethic yes yes Mm -hmm. But this is like crazy, you know. This uh, he he will go through the wall, you know, to uh, to make to do finish some exercise or uh, prove somebody wrong or, or this kind of thing. So I I call it crazy mind of, of succeeding basically. Oh, young yeah. man, it's not me. I want to thank you for you know giving us a chance, the opportunity for you coming on the show. No problem, man. No problem. You know, you know your experiences, your wisdoms. Um, one last question, though. Well, another. I, I don't want to forget to ask this because I know it's a good part of the show. Mm -hmm. While you've been playing, is there any crazy stories that you, you know, we've all, you know, seen some crazy stuff by playing all over Europe, right? As far as fans maybe doing something crazy or. Your body was in a crazy game that you couldn't believe it happened. If I give you an example, James told a story about when they played Olympiacos, how they were throwing bombs on the court and they had to leave. Yeah. Do you have any crazy story, even on or off the court? Maybe you see something off the court in another country. I mean, I played, I played in Partizan and uh, and the Partizan Red Star games are similar to what Mike was talking about, you know, throwing bombs and throwing uh, uh, things on the court. Um, to be honest, uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, actually, yes, I have a, I have a good one. I think you can look it up on, on, uh, on YouTube after uh, we played. That was my second season, so it was... 2008, 2000, no wait, 2008, 2009, Man, 2009, 2010, yeah. when I was playing with Bome Caleb in, oh. in Partizan, and uh, we played the finals of uh, Serbian League, and uh, you know all the season was was uh, tough. You know the referees were. Uh, letting like fight almost fighting you know every game against we play against uh, Hemo Farm uh, from Vršac and uh, every game you knew that you know something's can happen and uh, you know it was very on the limit of you know breaking it like going crazy fight and you know all the fans going in and stuff and it was like eight games like this and then the finals came we play in their place and uh, our two, one of our five men and their five men get in the clinch, and our our five men punch the the uh, their five, and then everybody start going on the court. Mm. I mean, go on YouTube and you will see, or I, I will send you after. And uh, like all the benches are on the floor, all the players that don't not not are not even dressed are on the court fighting. It's like. 30, 40 people fighting like like crazy. It's like madness, you know. So, uh, and I'm in the middle, you know. I'm trying. I don't know. I don't know if I try to fight or try to split or this. And I remember somebody. I was trying. I was holding somebody, and somebody from the back punched me in my in in, in my mouth, and got my tooth broken. It was like, <laughs> and so that was okay. We stopped. Uh, they ejected all the players. And we had to finish the game. So we finished three on three. So we finished the finals, the, the, the game, playing three on three last, it was like last two, three minutes. So we played three on three and, uh, and finished the game. And I don't think we continue playing. They didn't come to our place after that and we became champions after that like that. So basically, I think that was the craziest, craziest thing that happened to me, you know, during, during my career. I mean, these fans things, you know, for me, I like it, you know, I, uh, opposite fans cursing you or, 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 or this kind of the throwing stuff. I mean, for, for me, for me, it's normal because basically I grew, grew up in Belgrade and in this, this atmosphere and, and I like it, you know, actually Maccabi fans has a, has a song for me. I don't want to really curse on, 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 no, go for it. 
I mean, it's like, no, 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 they come, they say the F word and Vesely, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, and it's very, very uh, uh, rhythmic, so, and I like it. <laughs> I mean, it's, so basically, you every time you, you touch the ball, they start singing to you, and, and that's mm -hmm. it. But the craziest, craziest moment is the is the partisan against Hemo Farm, the fight that, that we did. Yeah, Dave said that was the last question. I apologize, because I got one <laughs> no more. No problem. One more. Listen, um, you've been around a long time. You've been in a lot of places. You've done it all. Um, can you please, if you if you could say anything to the young guys, the young American players who are looking to come over to Europe, what would you tell them? Uh. I would tell them uh, just to you know to 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 work hard. Okay, uh, if you are young, American, young doesn't matter where you are from. You know uh, when you just you work hard, uh, be be passionate about it, and uh, and uh, believe in yourself. That's the first thing. Uh, but uh, if, if it's for the young Americans or the, the Americans coming to, to Europe to play, uh, I think in many, uh, many players thinks that, okay, I understand everybody's dream is to go to the NBA uh, and that's the, the only goal and stuff like that. But there are uh, a lot of places, a lot of leagues in Europe or EuroLeague in general. Uh, it's, it's very, it's a good league. It's a, uh, competitive league so uh, I wouldn't uh, you know say I wouldn't turn my back on it you know that's sometimes I have a feeling that somebody comes to Europe and just say okay this is you know Europe and this is not even basketball and, and stuff like this um, sometimes you know this just change your mind maybe you know uh, try to understand uh, uh, the, this this kind of basketball and the, the different situation than in the US. You know, not everybody can make the NBA. You know, there is uh, what 300 players or 250. I don't know mm -hmm. what is the number, but uh, and a lot there is a lot of basketball players. So basically, you know, it's it's a not bad situation. I know it's not easy to be away from uh, this far away from uh, your country, but uh, I would I would say. As advice, uh, just don't turn the back on uh, on this, and just you know, just to try to get the best from the situation you are in. Hey, yeah, man. Like I want to thank you for coming on the show, giving us your time, your wisdom. You no have no problem. It was pleasure and it was fun, as you said. <laughs> hey, you know, we try to have you make it fun, man, for you, for the guys. Man, want to give you guys your flower and big you up. You know, thanks, man. We thanks. Thank you. You did on the beginning when you start listing all the things. So I can be your hype man. You know, you can hire me as your hype man. I can do that every game for you if you want me to. And to be honest, uh, that's also the question you didn't, you didn't ask. That how is it without the fans? I am the hype man by myself. I mean, yeah. I just I just walked into the arena and uh, it's full of fans. Even if it's against me or against uh, my my team, I mean, I love it. You know, so that's where I get the hype from. So now this year it's. It's not easy to, you know, get motivated. It's extra motivation to get just to play the game because, you know, every game it looks like with the empty arena, it's like uh, the friendly game, you know. So it's 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 not the same. So yeah. I'm the hype man. <laughs> I was talking to uh, the point guard at Afi on Chris Wright. And he was oh, like, yeah. man, every game when he runs, he said, when I run out the tunnel every game, it's like a strange feeling because there's nobody in the stands. No, I totally agree. It's 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 horrible. Yeah. It's not the same, yeah. So I wish it's gonna be over soon and we can have a full arenas and play normal basketball. Right. Yeah, we all wish. I miss coming yeah. to the games. <laughs> uh, but again, man, thanks for your time, everything that you told us, your wisdom, MVP. That's what I'm gonna start calling you, MVP. Your name is not Young Vesley no more. Okay, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you're always, you know, welcome. If you want to come back, you're always welcome to come back to the show. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> thanks, guys.
Thank you for another oh, wrong, for another episode of Your Stepping Podcast. Watch us on Next One's YouTube page or the nextones.com. You can also catch us on everything audio, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's Euro Stepping Podcast and OG. We got all the game. Thought it was a joke, what they still playing games for? Holes in my denim, never holes in my game, no. You won't be just like me, they don't love you the same, no.